Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Go No Go show. It's about Thursday lunchtime, so we're going to take a look at what's happened this week. I'm going to be doing it solo again today. Uh, Tyler is traveling. Uh, so let's get started, and I hope everybody's had a great week, and I hope the Go No Go charts can uh, shed some light on what's going on. So let me just share my screen quickly. We'll start with the asset map, as we typically do. So what we're noticing here is that we are still seeing the same trends uh, that have been in place for several weeks now. Uh, we were seeing some strength, a little bit of a rally. Uh, we were talking about a relief rally in equities last week, but that's rolled over a little bit again this week. And we see the go, no go trend on the top panel revert to those strong purple bars. Treasury bond prices in the second panel, again, prices moving inversely to rates. Those have also resumed their strong no-go trend and continued that this week. Where's the uh, the big trend been all year? It's been in commodities led uh, by oil, by energy. And we see that here, the USCI, the commodities index in the third panel, going back to those strong blue bars and staying there this week. And then interestingly, the dollar, the dollar was really struggling to hold its trend. We see those amber go fish bars, but uh, currently painting the first of another go trend, an aqua bar uh, for the dollar today. And then Bitcoin on the lower panel, Bitcoin continues to struggle. Um, so the trends are in place and remain where they've been for the for the past several weeks. So let's break it down a little bit further and go into the sectors for the equities. If we look at the sector REL map, now remember the REL map takes the go no go trend and applies it to the ratio, the relative strength ratio of each sector to the base index. And hopefully a lot of you guys have seen the show before, but if you haven't, remember that the go colors, meaning the bullish environment, are blue and aqua. The no-go or the bearish environment is strong purple or weaker pink. The stronger purple being the most bearish, the weaker pink being less bearish. And then those amber bars that you see sometimes creeping in as a security struggles to find its trend are our go fish bars. So what do we see on a sector uh, from a sector perspective? Well, again, uh, much the same as we've been seeing. We saw technology go back to being a relative underperformer lagging the base index you can see we saw these amber bars over the last few weeks and we were watching this inflection point but now we see on a relative basis the technology sector this top panel in a strong no-go relative to the s p discretionary still in a strong no-go as well and communications which has been sort of the uh the the third member of that underperformance posse is actually painting amber bars this week. So a little bit of an inflection point there for communications. Now, if we look through the rest of the sectors, we see the leadership still remains in some of the same ones. Energy, we see it in industrials, we see it in materials, we see it in utilities. Uh, we had a very interesting rollover on a relative basis where we see staples underperforming. Uh, so we see the consumer staple sector in a relative strong no-go trend. But if we're looking at this rotation and we're trying to figure out where to be positioned, we're still seeing the performance coming from the value sectors. We're seeing it from energy. We're seeing it from industrials and materials, utilities. And we're seeing the underperformance still in technology, discretionary uh, communications, and of course now staples as well as real estate. So that's the, the market um, from a top-down perspective, the asset classes, what their trends are showing us. We also have seen what the sectors are telling us using the REL map. If we go into some single security specific charts now, we can really take a look at what's going on uh, using the go to go charts. We'll start with uh, the S&P just to get a sense of the overall equity market. So if we change this to a template that shows just the SPY using the ETF. Uh, this is where we were last week. We were talking about this rally and seeing how quick it was and how fast it was. 
and wondering really if it was a relief rally in a larger no-go or the start of something more constructive. So what have we seen this week? Well, this week we haven't been able to move higher. Um, you can see, if you can see my crosshair here, that this level that we ran really quickly up to is a, an area of resistance. Uh, this clustering here that was support earlier in the chart and is now acting as resistance. Um, we saw the oscillator break above zero, which was a very good sign, but we've seen it fall back towards that zero line now. And we've seen the no-go trend strengthen so far this week. Uh, so remember, it's lunchtime on a Thursday. You know, things can change, but we are looking at the markets turning back this week to the stronger form of a no-go trend. So we're still going to be very wary here when looking at the equity markets as a whole. Now, another uh, thing that we looked at when we released our research note this week, Monday morning pre-market, was the dollar. And we were talking about the dollar dabbling with trend change because what we were seeing was for the first time uh, in several months, we were seeing some amber bars creep in here uh, on Monday. And if we look at the oscillator, we were sort of tipped off to this that we might see a bit more of a struggle, a slightly larger correction from uh, these highs that were pulled out by the counter trend correction arrow. We were tipped off by that move lower by the oscillator failing to find support at the zero line. We talk about this all the time, but the oscillator and the zero line is incredibly important when in trend. If the trend is healthy, the oscillator should find support at and stay above zero because all else being equal, there shouldn't be excessive selling pushing us into any kind of oversold conditions when an uptrend is strong and in place. So we saw this uh, oscillator break below zero on heavy volume, and we thought maybe we'll see some struggles to go higher in the short term. And then uh, earlier in the week, we saw these amber bars and thought, you know what, we are uh, flirting here with trend change. But what's happened this week, we stayed in amber bars, the dollars moved higher again, and we see a aqua bar, a go bar coming back. So the trend back in the go form. And when we look down at the oscillator now, we see it back at zero. So this is very critical. If we can get the oscillator to get into positive territory, that would confirm positive momentum in the direction of what is now again a go trend. If the oscillator fails here and rolls over, then we will be a little wary of this, uh, this move back to a go trend. But we're going to want to see the oscillator get back into positive territory as we uh, see the go trend coming back in price. Now, something else that we pulled out earlier in the week to have a look at was rates. Now, remember, rates moving inversely with prices. So we saw on the asset map that bond prices were in a no-go trend. Uh, this is rates. And we've been looking at this area on the chart here now uh, to try to get a sense of whether or not we are going to see some relief from these rising rates or whether this is just a short counter trend correction in a larger move higher in rates. Well, what have we seen over the last week and a half? We've seen rates return to a go trend and we've seen that trend strengthen to bright blue bars. We saw the oscillator get back above zero, telling us that momentum is now once again in the direction of the go trend. And that gives us that go trend continuation icon, green circle under price, telling us that there's going to be, uh, there's a resurgence in the trend. Momentum is back in the direction of the go trend. So what we can expect is price to try to get higher than the prior high here from, from May. Now, that all being said, if, if we are still in this rising rate environment, if we have re-entered a go trend on prices, then you know that may well uh, have some kind of uh, impact on what we're seeing in equity prices. And seeing equities struggle this week, seeing equities go back to a strong no-go, we see rates going back to a stronger go, the dollar resuming its go trend as well. Um, that's starting to tell a bit of a story um, and perhaps we aren't going to be so positive in terms of uh, equity prices going forward. So let's go back to the equities. And we, we saw that technology had rolled back into its 
no-go trend. We'd seen that technology had been uh, an underperformer for some time, and that was the case again now on a relative basis from looking at that sector map. So if we go in here and we, we look at the uh, the XLK, which is the technology sector, we'll look at it on a multi time frame. We'll look at it on a weekly time frame first, and then we'll drill down into the daily chart. So what are we seeing on a weekly time frame? We saw an incredible run in technology that really you know catapulted equity prices higher throughout the last couple of years. The pandemic rally was really driven by technology. Um, and we saw an incredibly strong and robust trend as the oscillator found support over and over and over again uh, through the year and a half or so that followed the pandemic lows in March of 2020. Now, um, this is a nice chart just to reiterate how to read the, the oscillator and the trend in, in the way they interact with each other. We saw another higher high in price here. And then as it corrects, the oscillator unable to find support at zero for the first time in these couple of years. And then as it comes back to zero, retests it, rolls over. Now we really get a sense that this no-go is in place. So what are we seeing at the moment? We saw a, a little bit of a rally in the last couple of weeks. We've seen the no-go trend weaken to pink bars. And we see the oscillator back testing zero from below, right? So if we, uh, if we roll over here, then we're going to see most likely a leg down on the weekly chart. So given that, we're going to we're going to have our market bias, we're going to have our larger time frame bias as a no-go for technology. If we drill it down now into the daily chart, let's take a look at what it's um, telling us. Well, much like the SPY, remember the S&P is a market cap weighted uh, sort of tech heavy index at the moment, dominated by some of these large tech stocks. So it makes sense that this chart looks very much like the S&P. So we saw this strong rally in technology prices last week. We've seen it hit resistance and we've seen the no-go strengthen back to purple bars as the oscillator comes back towards zero. Now, of course, we should be prepared for either scenario, either outcome when we uh, set ourselves up each week. And if this move higher is the start of something constructive, then what will we expect to happen down here at the zero line? Of course, we should. We all know this, we'd expect the oscillator to find support and stay above zero. If we can do that, we most likely will be setting a higher low. And perhaps now we've got enough going on to, uh, to, to move us into perhaps a go trend on the daily. And then we'll take a look at the weekly to see if that no go trend changes on the weekly. But as it stands, Yes, there is some positive momentum, but the no-go trend, even on a daily basis, uh, is rolling over back into these strong bars. No-go trend still on the weekly. Uh, we wouldn't be too interested in trying to look at the moment for long positions in technology. So let's go into technology and look at uh, one, of, um, one of the favorites. This is Meta Platforms, right? Formerly Facebook, of course. And if we were coming from our sector perspective and, and understanding that the no-go trend on a larger time frame is still in place, we also see prices rolling over on a daily time frame. Of course, we could be looking to get involved in the short side. So we would only want to do that if we get uh, something telling us that that makes sense. Well, if we look at something like Meta, you can see that we've been really struggling with this zero line for a significant portion of time. If you take out these little blips into negative territory, this would have been an incredibly extended max go, no, go squeeze. Remember when the oscillator stays at zero, what that's telling us is that all of the inputs to the oscillator, remember it's a blend of some of the most uh, robust and well-used momentum ideas when all of the inputs to this oscillator are in their neutral territory, meaning there's no directional momentum, then it's going to ride the zero line and the go no go squeeze builds, allowing us to visualize that reduced volatility in price. Now that doesn't mean reduced activity, it can be a real tug of war uh, between buyers and sellers, but what we're seeing is an inability of the oscillator to get off the zero line. Now, the trend that is prevailing here is a no go. It's generally a no-go. We've seen these no-go trend continuation icons. 
We've gone back to flirt with amber bars. We've returned to a no-go. We're still in a max squeeze. But you could be looking at something like this to take advantage of that underperformance in the tech sector. And especially if this oscillator comes down and gets rejected again by the zero line, giving us a trend continuation icon to the downside, you may well look for uh, Meta to, to attempt to set a new lower low from the low that it had back here in April. So given that the no-go, the underperformance on the technology sector is in place on a weekly chart and on a daily chart, uh, you might look into something like this to look for continued deterioration, uh, especially if we see the oscillator get rejected uh, by the zero line. So we've gone through the sectors, we've gone through the assets, we've gone through some of the more uh, sort of overarching ideas like the dollar and, and treasury rates and how those are going to impact what we see in equities. And we pulled out something from the technology sector uh, to, to get a sense of uh, where we can perhaps even be taking advantage of that underperformance. And we looked at, at Meta. So where could we look uh, if we're trying to position ourselves to take long trades, given that we are um, in the midst of what looks like a tough spot for equities as a whole. Well, remember, if we go back to the sector rel map, what was showing outperformance? It was the value sectors. We were talking about energy. We were talking about industrials. We were talking about materials. So let's pull up um, the material sector and see if we can um, give ourselves <laughs> something to get excited about. So in our weekly note this week, I had the weekly chart up and I was noting this massive consolidation period over here uh, really for uh, almost, well, for about a year, I, I would say over the weekly chart. But we're seeing, generally speaking, the oscillator holding the zero line. Okay, so it's a bit choppy. We see some, uh, some, some moves, some brief moves down into negative territory, but generally speaking, holding the zero line. And right now we're back at zero and we are still in go bars. So on a larger time frame, we could say that the weight of the evidence tells us that yes, we are relatively outperforming on XLB. If you think back to the chart of the SPY or the chart of technology on a weekly basis, you could see that we'd really rolled over into a no-go. That's not the case here with materials. So there is some outperformance in the materials sector. Uh, what we then looked at in uh, to see how it would play out this week, we looked at the Home Builders ETF, ticker is XHB. And you can see on a daily chart that when we were looking at this on Monday, we were seeing go bars. So this is a case of, you know, you want it to work out, you, you see everything stack up, you see outperformance in the sector, you see the oscillator get above zero, you see the trend change, and as you can see, it hasn't done what perhaps many of us would have expected uh, this week. But of course, we've had some struggles this week in the equity markets. So this is a, uh, a strong reminder that it doesn't work every time. You need to have uh, some really um, sensible risk management in place. And for me, using go-no-go -no -go charts, I quite like these situations where it doesn't work out because it tells me how the chart reacts. Um, when it doesn't go in, in the direction that you uh, you might have positioned yourself. You can see that quite quickly, we went out of the go trend, we saw an amber bar, and now we're in a no-go. So after really, really struggling this year, the home builders, uh, we thought, okay, perhaps there's some signs of life here. And then no, not yet. You would probably get out of your position for a small loss and, and move on. But that was one that I wanted to just to go over today because this is what we were looking at at the beginning of the week. And this is what happened uh, where we stand right now on Thursday lunchtime. So um, where, what's left? Um, where is there to turn to if we are looking at um, trying to find or generate that alpha in the markets? Well, uh, if you're watching this live, nobody can see you. But if you want to shout out, I'll give you three guesses to get the, uh, to get the sector. Um, it's been energy all year. Um, so we we can look at any number of energy charts. They've been all they've been popping all, up all throughout uh, screens that we run. This year has been strong for uh, commodities and just uh, most commodities and also energy, of course. 
and oil stocks. So if you are sick of talking about oil stocks, I'm sorry. But if you want to see, we all like to see go trends. <laughs> if you want to see go trends, um, do yourself a favor and and pull up an, an energy chart. Um, so this is where uh, XLE has been on a weekly chart. It is just a strong go trend, um, blue bars, strong blue bars, momentum above zero. So just a reminder, as we always like to talk about uh, the Jimmy Buffett song, it's five o'clock somewhere. There's a trend somewhere. And yes, this week's uh, price action in the equity markets has not followed through after the rally we saw last week to the chagrin of some people. Um, but there are trends out there. And we've been looking at stocks like, uh, let me pull one up for you, Occidental Petroleum as, a, as an opportunity when we saw this fresh go trend and we saw renewed uh, momentum above the zero line. Uh, this was a stock that's done well for, uh, for the, in the energy space, uh, VLO. This is where the trends have been. Um, so these, these charts are, are looking through the trend and hopefully you're seeing those opportunities to take part either when you see fresh go trend continuation icons after a, a little bit of a, a dabble with um, negative territory on the oscillator and an amber bar back into go trend, trend continuation icons, trend continuation icons, the discussions about whether these energy stocks are overextended while well, we get support at zero, go trend continuation icons again. So don't despair if you, uh, if you want to see the blue, let's uh, load up some energy charts uh, this week. And with that, let's, let's wrap it up. Thanks so much uh, for watching. Hopefully the, the, the double act will be back next week and it'll be Tyler and I. If you're watching this on YouTube, fantastic. Thank you very much. It, also check out Stock Charts TV, the on-demand um, TV functionality with Stock Charts where you can watch uh, any of the shows anytime. Please check that out. Uh, also, we've got a lot coming up in terms of conferences if you want to catch us doing presentations, we've got a special event coming up on Stock Charts June 15th, 5 p.m. And we've also got a, an event coming up on June 27th. So stay uh, up to date with what we're doing. And I hope to see you all soon and next week. But don't forget, special event next Wednesday, 5 p.m. Eastern on Stock Charts TV. Thank you very much. Have a great week and a good weekend. Hey guys, Dave Keller here with StockCharts.com. Thanks so much for watching our video. If you enjoyed it, and we hope you did, hit the like button right below. Also, we have so much new content every day. Consider subscribing to the channel. Just hit the subscribe button in the video or right below. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. Have a fantastic day.